Welcome to the After Hours Podcast, hosted by Harry Haas and James Friedlender, presented by My Investing Club. What's going on, guys? We are back with another episode of the After Hours Podcast. Uh, today, we have a very special guest, Arnobi, who is a uh, member in MIC. So what's up, dude? Thank you for coming on. Hey, man. What's up? Glad, what's glad up? to be here, guys. Of course, of course. We love getting to meet all the new members, and, and it's kind of cool. We're getting a lot of episodes in now, so it's like you guys yeah. are really getting to see a ton of our members, and just yeah. eventually we're going to have to go back around and reintroduce. So anyways, <laughs> but so what's going on, man? I, we wanted to talk, how did you find trading, and then how did you eventually kind of get into MIC, kind of run us through your, your career so far? Yeah, yeah, sure. So so like you said, my name's Arnobi. Uh, I've been with you guys now for a year, maybe a year and a half. Um, pretty quiet, you know, I'm just yeah. trying to learn yeah. and, and, and not really posting too much. Cause I feel like I really don't have anything genuine to add right now. So, so I'm pretty yeah. quiet and it's sidelines, but, um, I got into trading, man, I wanted to get into it when I was in college and I really, I've thought about it for a long time. And, and, but I, I have that typical kind of immigrant family story, mm-hmm. you know, we, we came up poor uh, worked really hard, but didn't have a lot of money to do anything with. So what I wanted to do out of college was uh, real estate and uh, and trading or some type of way. I knew I wanted to do it, but I didn't know how and I didn't have the money. So fast forward a little bit. I bought a couple of houses. I got my real estate license. Uh, I made a little bit of money selling and flipping uh, yeah. my first house. And, and with that money, then I started dabbling a little more uh, into trading I opened up a $5,000 account first with, uh, I think it was Interactive Brokers. Mm-hmm. Yep. And uh, and yeah, after that, I just kind of got another account, another $5,000 account. You got, you know, everything that I did was basically yep. what, what you guys kept advising or mentioning, like, hey, yep. get two accounts so you could do more trading, yep. more, more shorting. And that's primarily what I, what I do, shorting. Uh, and so, yeah, so recently I moved up to, to my full account uh, with, with uh, Cobra. Oh, awesome! Yeah, that's kind of well. I didn't, I didn't trade my way there. I don't want to. I don't want to yeah, yeah. say that I got I went from five to thirty or anything like that. But most most people don't, bro. <laughs> most people yeah. don't. Yeah, exactly. So I mean, you know, I I invested a little bit. You can say, uh, like in twenty seventeen, a little Bitcoin, and mm-hmm. that actually went really well for me. When I, uh-huh. you know, I didn't catch the top or anything. It, it was falling, and I saw it go to twenty, and when it came back down to the eights and seven, I started buying a little bit, buying a little bit. And when it took off, that gave me more money to pull out go. and then start my big account and, and really commit a little more to, to trading. That's, That's awesome. pretty cool, dude. I, I feel like, I mean, I don't want to like go off on the PDT rant, but like, I feel like people are always like embarrassed and like, Oh, I like, I, I funded it. I didn't trade to it. And it's like, yeah, to actually trade your account over PDT is like really fucking hard. <laughs> it yeah. is hard. It's not impossible. Um, you know, I think certain market sentiments are like better for that and, and you can do it. But yeah. like the reality is like the three day trade thing is fucking hard. <laughs> so it's like, Super tough. yeah, you know, yeah. I, I, wasn't, I, always, I wasn't getting there. <laughs> dude, I, yeah. I always tell people like, you know, and this is not financial advice whatsoever, <laughs> but I'm like, you know, it's just, if you from the beginning can fund your account to like 30, which sounds like a lot of some people, but a lot of people have that. It's like you fund your account and you set max losses. Yeah. Like, you're probably going to lose less money long term than like when you're under PDT. Because I remember being under PDT, I was so stressed. I would take bad trades because like I just needed to trade. I wouldn't yeah. cut myself off because I knew I, I couldn't trade for like a week. Right. And right. like that whole five day rolling period. Yeah. I, the amount of times I got like margin, co- like my broker was like, you have to fund money. I'm like, fuck, I have to close this one now <laughs> and go open somewhere else. Because I did four trades in a week because I was like, I didn't fucking get it. It was yeah, yeah, that yeah. Yeah. obnoxious as hell. Yep, that happened I got lucky. Me. I also was growing during like a really easy time. Like I swear, like the market back then was was so different. Like Harry, you remember like 2017, yeah, yeah. 2018, like stocks would you'd wake up and stocks would literally just fade all day. Yeah. Like, they like, would just, like, literally, literally in that time period, like if you went through the filings and found that a stock had like a big ATM or something like that, there was like so little volume that you'd be like, All right, confirmed all day fader boys, let's go. Yeah. And Dude, like if the thing would be fade. Five million. If it, if a stock traded ten million shares in a day, 
it was like this thing's a fucking runner. Now stocks trade yeah. ten million shares before the open. And you're like, man, right? <laughs> yeah. It's changed so much. But see, anyways, that's how you can get off on a tangent on, on PDT shit. But but anyway, <laughs> so so where are you in your trading now? So like, kind of, are you are you doing well, or what's what's working well for you? Where you're struggling? Kind of run yeah. through that. Yeah, yeah, that's a that's a great question for me right now because um, so so going back to how I how I transitioned, I started doing well. Uh, with yep. my two five thousand dollar accounts, actually, uh, nice. my risk management was was going well. I was just shorting uh, small caps, and um, I started dabbling with large caps. I, I've, I was always interested in large caps, right? Uh, that was mm-hmm. the first thing I started yep. investing in in Robinhood when you know when Robinhood came out. Yeah. I opened yep. up an account because I didn't have a lot of money, so I opened up with I think a thousand or two thousand dollars, and I put it into a couple of large cap stocks. So cool. So I, I started dabbling with, with those large caps again, and I found some success. And uh, I was even going to like write a post in after hours. Like I was, I was telling all my taps, like, oh, we just wait and see. I was, I was, I was, <laughs> we made it. I was, I was on a <laughs> run, dude. I think I made like, 10, which for me, 10,000 in a month. Yeah. Was, that's was great. Yeah. Because that's it, it's better you know, for 99% of traders, dude. <laughs> that's, more that's more not, money than I, you know, more money than any other little thing yep. has given me right so so i was like wow i'm, I'm really i'm really on to something and then i made the switch from the from the interactive brokers the small accounts to the big account mm. yep. and and i also set a max broker loss at 500 dollars. and okay. i thought okay this is the beginning of my real career yep. and uh and then I started hitting that max loss like a champ. Yeah. Like mm. I hit it for two weeks straight, mm. just back to yep. back. And yep. so it really threw me off. I gave back a lot of those uh, gains, you know, those 10,000 that I had made the previous month. I think this was like November, December. Mm. And so going into this year, man, I, I've, I've been up and down and that's kind of, that's kind of where I'm at now. Um, uh, I've been talking to a lot of traders. I've been talking to to some of the mods, you know, uh, my tabs. I talked to Two Way about it, um, yep. and and yeah, I've just been working on on sizing down and and trying to trying to take it a little bit slower. I think I got ahead of myself. I got really hyped up with the with that big money that I saw, and I thought, man, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna yeah, take this all day, thousand yeah, yeah. dollar days all the way now, and yeah. smack me pretty hard in the face, yeah. Yeah, I think I think that that is a big struggle that we talk to a lot of people about because like James and I have really like I mean, the past like six months done a ton of interviews and talked to a lot of people. And that's a big struggle is like you get you you progress like a little bit. And then all of a sudden you're like, oh, I'm a, I'm a trader now. I'm a this, I'm a that. <laughs> yeah. And you get over eager and you size too much and you really start to deviate away from the process. Like yep. if you look at how you got there, um, nine times out of 10, it was like, you know, trades where the top was set or trades like where you kind of knew, like kind of like you almost like have a good thesis behind it. You know, like you can say mm-hmm. the top was set. I know a ton of people who were long were trapped. Um, maybe it was like under view app or at least kind of close to it. Like you have a, like a lot of like pieces to kind of paint. Whereas yeah. like once you kind of, uh, you know, get a little like, loose. should I say like loose or coffee yeah. on the rules, um, <laughs> you know, yeah. you're like, oh, like, and this happens to a lot of people where they're like, oh, well, it's a shit small cap, so I can go short here. Or, oh, it's a sh- shit, so I can keep adding, 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 adding. And you kind of get too eager and you size a bit too much. And that's where you kind of get into dr- trouble, you know? Yeah. yeah. Dude, I, I don't know. Uh, I don't know much. I don't pretend to know a million everything. But one of the biggest things I know is like the second you feel confident and cocky in trading, you generally are about to get like fucked. Like it's like it, it's not when you're like trading well. Like if you're trading well and you're confident in your trading, is different. But once you feel like you have it figured out, and you're like, this is the start because I've been there. This is the beginning of my like my yeah. fucking like Jesse Livermore career. That's yeah. usually about the time you're about to take like max loss after the, max loss. And it, big and it's, hit, yeah. That's it, dude. And it's tough because I mean, you know, especially. I think a lot of people, and I have this theory that every when you start out in the beginning, it's easier to make money because you have so much less understanding of like how far the money can go in trading too. Because like when I was new, I like 
I was using size that I like didn't even understand. Like I would just pick, oh, like what is like 5,000 shares on like a $3,000 account? I'm like, what's the worst that's going to happen? Yeah. But like now right. that you know that, you're like, it, then that's when I wouldn't want to say a fear, but like the reality sets in like, this is serious. You could lose a lot of money. You could fuck yourself over. But like when you're new, it's like, I hear stories all the time. People are like, oh yeah, my first six months, I made like a hundred grand. And then now I'm down 200 grand. Yeah. So it's like, it's not easy, you know, and it, and it's, it's just funny. Like that's, it's the market's way. And, and you're not alone, dude. Most people go down this path. They have that, that those moments of clarity. They're like, this is it, this is it. And then like, now it's just finding footing. And like, again, sometimes going from being under PDT to over PDT is like a little bit of a mental jump because it's like, you're used to trading under a certain yeah. way. And yeah. you kind of do have to change. Like you change because now you're like, oh, I can change a million times. My first day over PDT, I think I placed like over 200 trades. Because I was just like, I was like, fucking yeah, you were crazy. I, I was like, I was like a machine gun, bro. I was like, and I probably ended the day red. I, I don't even fucking remember, yeah. to be honest with you. But, but it's another, tough. another thing that, that I'm frustrated with now is it's sort of along those lines. Like, uh, I kind of lost sense of, of like what a hundred dollars is. I, I, I yep. can't tell you how many times I've in the past, I don't know, two months or something just looked at five or eight hundred dollars and and i wanted more and this is yeah. not the market really to be doing that really and 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 i i've given it all back i've given it back yeah. and then some and that's the most frustrating thing to me so I, I think i'm struggling more with like the mental side of it that that i i'm frustrated with myself because i'm like dude you know you never looked at 200 or 300 dollars like with you know like oh we, i, I yeah. can go for more like no, yeah, appreciate that a little bit. Like you got that in ten minutes, dude. Get out of the get, and I, you know, so I'm I'm struggling with that. Yeah, I think also as far as like market sentiment goes, is like if you're like a let's say let's say like just to keep things easy, let's say you're like an all day trader guy. You know, that's your main strategy. And see, a lot of people when they're first kind of starting, they they uh, I think like the trap that a lot of people fall into, like not necessarily you, but like you you kind of start building a strategy around the current market sentiment you know so yeah. as uh let's say let's say all day faders are hot right you know there was a time even like in the last like i'd say three months where you could just go short at the open and you were good on yeah. yep. you know? yeah. like and like the stocks were like not really strong and they were weak but once the market cycle kind of turns a little bit a lot of people kind of fail to adapt. And that's why I think so many new people make a lot of money. Cause like, they're like, like brand new people come into the market and they're like, oh man, like, look at that breakout. Like, how are you not making money off that six months ago? And they're like, oh, what an idiot, this guy. And they're like, oh man, I'm long in the breakout. And they do that for like two, three weeks. And then all of a sudden breakouts stop working for like an entire year. And people are like, what the fuck out? You know, <laughs> right. like, same thing with all day faders where there's like, yeah, all day faders. It's like people like see a bunch of all day faders. They adjust, adjust, adjust. They're like, I'm ready for the faders, bro. I'm ready for the faders. And now there's no fucking faders. And all yeah. that work they had just done was based on a prior market sentiment, right? And then they start forcing or, yeah. you know, they're yeah. like, this looks like it and, and yeah. start yeah. taking it on the chin. Yeah. Yeah. They either start forcing or, so you really need, uh, there's two things that you can do with that like number one is like there's the key mic strategies that work every single day but also like if your mindset is like i'm not going to do that mic process and i'm going to like venture somewhere else then you know you can get in some trouble where you either have to just not trade every day and be okay with not trading every day mm -hmm. or uh you know maybe getting wrecked following that whatever system it is you have every day you know like <laughs> Harry, yeah. you posted a picture about this like recently. It was kind of saying like your strat. It was like your strategy in the middle, and then it was like times where it's hot and it's like yeah. things are great, and it was like times where it's like kind of working, and then times where you're like it's not working at all. And like yeah. that just unfortunately is strategy. Like not even the MIC strategy is very simplistic, and it works. I, in my opinion, it works in every market cycle, but there are mar market cycles where it is way harder. Like I know I can always tell when it changes yeah. because it's usually when Alex will take like a loss. Once like that crazy, like big runner start coming in, like that initial transition for like yeah. scalping line to line, it gets fucking tough. So it's like every strategy is going to have, it's like somewhere that like holes are poked in it. 
but it's just all that matters, right? It's like risk management and all that stuff. So it's like, yeah. it, is, it is tough. It's fucking tough. And as far as like the mental thing that you were kind of saying, like the money thing's funny. Like, and I wanted to bring this up because like lately my girlfriend and I will get these dumb fights about this where like, like for example, like I lost like 10 bucks on the trip. She's like, you just lost 10 bucks. It's like, I don't fucking care. It's $10. Like, I don't care. And you're just, and she's like, what is wrong with you? And I'm like, I don't like, you just, you do, you lose mentally, like the, the value of like money, especially yeah. nowadays dude, with locates as a short seller. Like I'm starting off my days, like down 500 bucks. Like oh, that is yeah. a psych, that's psychotic shit. Like it's not <laughs> that's crazy. to feel, it is. Yeah, it, you it guys sucks. are a fucked specimen. It is fucked. Like Bear and I laugh about it all the time. We're like, oh, we're, we're red five, 600 bucks. He's raving bigger. I'm like, how do we do this and why? But, and the problem is it, we do, we, you, we've just lost that, that mindset of like how far money can go. And like, I know like Ty, uh, Ty who's, uh, or Tay, how do you, is it Tay? Ty? Yeah. Mama we should, what, the, yeah, yeah. Mama Tay, <laughs> Mama Grandma. Or fucking, but she, the, uh, one of the mods at MIC is an amazing woman, but she's always shitting on me because I, I go out a lot and it's kind of like, I go out to get steaks and stuff because like that does weirdly remind me of how much like money can go, how far yeah. it can go, like items and shit, whatever. But like, when it comes to like trading, like if I'm, if I make like a thousand dollars in a day and it's like, I have that itch to be like, wow, dude, you should be up $2,000 or bigger or bigger. Right. It's kind of like, well, that thousand dollars is like four steaks, six steak dinners. Like it's like really, really good like yeah, night out, like a full, yeah. Yeah. It, it's crazy. I got in a and, similar, I got in, oh, yeah, sorry. Good. I don't, I don't mean to cut you off. No, go like, go I, go I, got, I got in a, a similar situation where um, I had made like around a grand, it was like around a grand. But like, I had like kind of planned to sell like a lot higher, but like, for example, I bought at like four bucks, sold at like 450, 460 area. I didn't really have that much size on, made a grand and, uh, you know, but my plan was like to sell like definitely a lot higher and like, you couldn't really size into this one. So I was like, I'll just take like a couple thousand shares and like, that's fine. And so I end up selling 450. That's great. Stock ends up going to like 650 on this day. And I was so pissed for the whole day. And my girlfriend was like, yeah, but you still made a grand. Like, who cares? And I was like, right. Oh, that's, that's fucking bullshit. I was like, no, that's, that's fucking bullshit. You don't get it. That's you don't get bullshit. it. Yeah. A thousand dollars. What is that? Yeah. But that I mean, tough. maybe kind of going back. Uh, maybe you could kind of talk about like your strategies and kind of like what you're struggling with. Cause James and I, when we talked about doing these podcasts with like people who are like struggling or like on the cusp of like, kind of like just kind of getting there, maybe you could kind of talk about like strategies and James and I could like give you some advice on how to get better. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Um, that that I, might I mainly, be a good turn. I mean, I mainly do like low hanging fruit for small caps. I, I stick with low hanging fruit or first, resistance mm -hmm. um taking them at vwap uh mm -hmm. that, that's mainly what i focus on when i'm when i'm or, or you know hitting outer lines mm -hmm. hitting that uh high a day uh and giving it a little bit of room above that so but what i think i'm struggling with most is discipline honestly it's it's knowing like what you guys were saying about market sentiment and knowing that if things are slow i don't have to trade Honestly, I, I don't think I've not traded a day. Even when I know that I shouldn't trade, I still, I'm, I feel like I'm there. I'm, uh, you know, I see maybe someone in the chat taking some trades and I'm like, okay, I missed those. Let me look for some. And that's where I think I'm getting in trouble. Just, just kind of not having the discipline and the patience to, to, to really wait for, for the outermost line. Maybe I'm impatient and I take a, a you know, an inner line and then I get squeezed. And instead of being disciplined and maybe stopping where I said I would stop, I'll give it a little more room or I'll add at the outer line now. And now if it squeezes past the outer line, I'm in big yeah. trouble. Now. And and I hit my max loss. <laughs> yeah. 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 I, I definitely have some advice on that. Oh, for sure. Yeah, please. Yeah. So I think as far as let's say, let's say there's like, so as far as kind of first resistance goes, I think for me, like we review a lot of charts and weekend mentoring and like mm -hmm. a lot of people with the whole first resistance thing is like, they don't really take into account where the stock is opening up. And like, I'm not saying that this is you, but like, this is like a big problem I've been seeing. Cause like when you deal with like the weekend mentoring for like almost two years now, like you kind of see the same shit over and over and over again. Right. right. So as far as first resistance goes, if it's a really, really broken stock, 
and like we're opening up under VWAP, the first place I would want to get short would be the first line that's like over VWAP. And the reason is, is because like recently I've just been seeing that that little bit over VWAP and that little line over VWAP has been the, the time where you'll get a lot of like kind of excess supply, right? It's a really good area to trap longs who are uh, buying that VWAP reclaim. It's a really good area to have a lot of people who are short underneath VWAP kind of stop out in that area. That's one area that I've seen that's worked really, really, really well. Now, if the stock is opening up at VWAP or around VWAP, you got to wait for the most outer line, right? You got to wait for the most outer line. That's what I've been seeing 100% all the time. If we're opening up kind of near VWAP, around VWAP, you know, you got to always wait for that kind of outer line. So take into account every day, like how far away is the stock from VWAP, right? Same thing on low hanging fruit. Like if low hanging fruit is super, super below VWAP, you want to get short a little bit above VWAP to, to, to just test the waters. That's where I would want to get short my first bullets, right? Saying to myself, I think dumb longs are going to chase here. Shorts are going to be stopping out using VWAP as rest. That would be a good liquidity area for me to want to get into a position short, right? Yeah. And um, that's mm. kind of been what, what I've been seeing in that kind of situation um, where a lot of people will short the broken stock and get short too early. And then by the mm. time it blows them out, the real move happens and I'm like, fuck, what did I do? But it's really right. just timing, uh, right? It's beyond, it's yeah, the timing aspect. And I feel like that's tied to the discipline aspect, like the yeah. not having the patience or the discipline to wait for that line. Yeah, yeah. The, and you got to be saying that. like, like for me to want to get short, like what's the edge that I have, you know? Like for me, it, going short at a line is like a reason to go short for sure. But if you can like pair that line with like what I just said, where like, I think longs are chasing into this like quote unquote little breakout level. I yeah. think that a lot of shorts are going to be stopping out over VWAP. You know, you're pairing up multiple ideas now with that one area rather just than just saying like maybe it's a whole or half dollar number up there as well, right? Now you have so much more to paint that picture. Whereas if you're just like, oh, I'm going short out of line because it's a line, like that's a lot less than yeah. having this bigger picture idea, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. My my big thing with discipline, so I have, I have two things. So one, I've I've like kind of grown into this like trader lately. I, I've been talking a lot with like uh Mickey Van Bear about this and stuff, and just the thing is now like I almost don't want to trade every day. That's kind of how my personality has shifted. Like, and that's how I keep myself disciplined to trade kind of like how I'm trading right now. Uh I basically approach every day like I don't want to risk my money, like I know how much capital I have. I'm like like I'm not here to gamble. I'm not here to just trade to trade. Cause like if you're coming to the market just to like trade anything, that's when you go on to like the gambling like little like meter and it's like you're starting to go towards being a gambler because yeah. that's the point. You're supposed to only trade when you have an edge. So yeah. on the days now where like I find myself like really like there's just no setups, uh, which is happening a lot. Like it does happen and that's okay because the day that there are setups, you're making that much more, et cetera, whatever. But I just have started like kind of doing this thing where like I'll actually start looking at large caps, not to trade, but to invest, like to buy something. Like I have a lot of long-term investments that like I have, I really like and pay attention. I'm trying to get better at understanding like macro ideas. Yeah. So like uh, those are the days where like I pretty much shut down small caps and, and I just like I always will scoop up something in large caps. Like there doesn't really go – there's not really many days that go by that I don't have some involvement with the market. But I just try to get that itch out in, in another educated, disciplined way. And th once I started adapting that idea, it made not trading easy. It almost made, like I said, it made it like you don't want to trade unless there's an opportunity. Like Harry for a long time, like I feel like Harry wasn't trading that much during the dead market because why, the, mm. why would he risk his money? Like it just wasn't yeah. that much. Like until the opportunity comes, that's worth losing whatever you're worth, uh, whatever you're okay losing on a setup, then you're yeah. not going to touch anything. And then as far as like actually like on the chart, um, the it's funny, like everyone wants to like, no one wants to do this stuff because it is hard, but a way to fix it really is the shorting is fantasy orders at your best line. Like once you like start looking at charts and I, all I used to do was I would print out Alex's charts, Bow's charts, et cetera, and just re recognize where the stock turned on a bigger scale, like either on a five minute or whatever, like just 
as long as it correlated with a line on the chart that made sense, I started paying attention to that. And I just started setting fantasy orders for that level. And you would be shocked how many times nowadays too, because a lot of how I trade now, I do use fantasy orders, fantasy orders more. A lot of times I just set an order and I'm like, that's never going to fill. Like, but it's the perfect area for me to get in. And I, it's insane how many times it actually does get to your line. Like these lines are magnets, just like Bao says. Like the stocks tend to go to them. So it, it really comes to just setting fantasy orders and like setting hard stops. Because once you yes. set a hard stop, I like my thing now is like once I get in a position, if I'm in, I actually get up and like walk away for a minute because I'm like, I'm in, I have an automatic hard stop that's placed when I like fill kind of thing. Yeah. And what am I going to do? You know, like I don't want to be the guy that's just adding, 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 because mm -hmm. that's not a real edge. That's like, that's very hard for people to do. Bao can get away with it. Bao can do that because Bao is so disciplined at scaling in and scaling out. But a lot of people can't do that. It's very hard. Very hard for yeah. like the average guy to like size accordingly and not, fuck himself over being in too early kind of thing so yeah. so you, you kind of have to determine like do i want to be that guy that's just adding 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 and hoping the stock turns or are you making an educated guess on the chart where the stock realistically should top out with a risk that you can take if it doesn't if it continues to go so that was kind of like those things have changed my trading a lot especially yeah. this year and I know. I and think those are very helpful. I things. also think that there's something to be said for uh, saying to yourself, like, okay, I'm just going to wait till the stock kind of gets overextended. And I know that the top is set for sure. Like, I feel yeah. like every single person knows when the top is set. Like, you shouldn't, yeah. you shouldn't be arguing with uh, the guy <laughs> next to you on whether the top is set or not, right? Like, right both right. of you should be at a mutual consensus. Like, all three of us can look at a chart and, uh, you know, if, if, if anyone is saying anything like, I don't know, or, oh, maybe not, top is not set, right? Everyone here would come to the same consensus of going, oh, that's fucked. Like, we would be watching a ticker, all three of us right now, then goes para, and then all of a sudden we get that candle, and James and I would just look at each other, you know, you two, and we'd be like, oh, that's, that's, that's fucking done. Like that, yeah. right? And so there's something to be said for waiting for those moments and just attacking yeah. them, right? Yeah. That's an, another thing too. And there's really this kind of battle, I think, between like anticipation and confirmation, right? Because like anticipating is more of the prediction side, right? And a lot of people kind of do it where they're like, okay, I, I think this is what, like fantasy orders would be anticipation, right? I think this is where the stock is going to top out. This is giving me the best lines. Uh, you know, this is what I'm going to take. You know, as far as the whole confirmation side goes, it would be just waiting for things to be done and waiting for the top to set, you know? So I think I agree. you really need to kind of differentiate between uh, and do I want to be more of an anticipation trader with a lot tighter risk or do I want to be a confirmation trader with like maybe yeah. a little bit less size, a little bit more type of risk. And you really need to define that for yourself because when you find yeah. out your personality, because a lot of people need that confirmation when the top is set, and that's why fantasy orders don't work for them, is because they need that confirmation. And if you just say, you know, I need this confirmation in, in my trading, that that's the type of, you know, situation that I need, you know, a lot of those people kind of find peace, uh, you know, and they just wait till the top is set, short, and then that's what they kind of do. So I think for a lot of people, you need to kind of define yourself as, okay, what type of trader am I? And now yeah. how am I going to attack based on my personality? <laughs> and a lot of people, they, they get, they get, they turn into a confirmation, but then they're like, oh, but I'm a gambler. And they start, <laughs> yeah. right? That happens to a lot of people. Yeah. You know, you got to say like, what's my personality? And what has worked for me? Like, I guarantee you could go back and look at that, you know, stretch when you made that 10 grand mm -hmm. and go through the trades and go through every trade and be like, wow, that really worked for me. Now, a part of that will be the market sentiment, right? A part mm -hmm. of that will be the situation that we were in. But right. I think also another part of it will be, you know, this is the way that my personality works in order for me to make money because me and you aren't different. Me and James aren't different. We're all different here. We all trade different ways. But um, in order for me, like for me, myself, I'm, I'm a bit more of an anticipation kind of guy, right? I like to have an idea. I like to put the trade on and I like to let it work and set my risk accordingly. That's what I like yeah. to do. But some people kind of need that stock to 
push up super high and they like to buy that kind of first bounce, which is kind of a confirmation strategy in itself as well, right? So you really need to kind of find the type of person you are to really maneuver, you know, your own trading plan and, and your own kind of setups in the market, right? Uh, I, I think that that's great advice. Yeah, absolutely. Like the kind of stuff that I, I do need to figure out because you're right. If I think back to those uh, those months where I had that really good stretch, I think I was setting fantasy orders. I'm pretty sure that that's what I was doing. I was I was setting uh, my order, setting the yeah. stop, and and I was done. And I yeah. and I would walk away from the three tickers, and if yeah. two of them hit or one of them hit, that's when I was yeah. and I was hitting them with size yeah. because I knew my my risk. And I think when I transitioned over, I started to go into like a more yeah. like, well, oh, I'm going to handle this yeah. one trade at a time, yeah. tick by tick. And I got yeah. away from just setting yeah. it and forgetting it. And now I'm like, yeah. just, you know, a, a guru furu trying to trying to hit it. And it just didn't work. Yeah. yeah. So you need to. Yeah. And I think that's what happens to a lot of people. Right. You trade process and your confidence is really driven by your way to trade process. Right. Yep. Like. Yep. Like so you get the confidence. Yeah. And then the confidence meter fills up and then your eyes <laughs> fill with dollar signs and then you're fucking adding, 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 yeah. adding, adding, and then you get fucked and then, you know, right? Yeah. That's what happens. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, and, and that is what happens, right? There's this kind of like pendulum in everyone's trading where they go from process to profits, right? And you really need to uh, keep yourself in check and always humble yourself. Like I, I say every single day, like if I'm, if I'm going in a trade, that's like half debatable, I'm like, okay, why, why are you taking this fucking trade? Like I, I'll even say it to myself, <laughs> like, what, what are you doing? Like, yeah. there's no way that this is even suitable. And that's a lot of these guys who start longing broken stocks fall into that trap as well. Right. That is not a process fucking at all, but People want to make money. They don't see a good long situation. They start forcing. And it's that really forcing, right? You go yeah. you, and like you could have had a day where like three of your fantasy orders didn't hit, right? Or maybe you went through one or two days where, you know, your fantasy orders didn't hit and you're like, hmm, like I got to change something or I got to do something different, right? And then you get in that meddling situation where you go a little lower and then you go a little lower and then you're like, oh, and then you, and that's what really kind of screws you up, you know? So yeah, I go back yeah. to the kind of, you know, business plan, fantasy order. I'm an algo type of trading. You know, if, if, if you're just saying to yourself, like, all I am is a risk manager, right? I have my fantasy orders here. This is what I'm going to do. This is my plan for the day. And just wait for those to hit and then kind of, cover those support levels, that would be process trading, right? But the whole like tick by tick, oh man, I, I saw a seller, I saw this, I saw that, like half these guys don't even know what the fuck they're talking about. Now that I'm actually in a position to say this, like half these guys don't know what the fuck they are talking about. So in my opinion, I would just be the whole kind of process situation, uh, process oriented trader, and you will see the PNL correlate with that process, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, of course, of course, man. I, I, and I think, again, it, it comes down to a lot of it is like without even knowing a little bit of ego too. Like you just always feel like you're going to beat the stock. You always feel like you're going to be the guy that has a perfect chart, this, that, the other thing. Yeah. And it, like Harry said, like once you get in that meddling stage, like you're already fucked. Like yeah. Once you start like trying yeah. to change your process, like once you're like, oh, like, oh, I'm going to, I'm going to short here a little bit. You're already done because it, yeah. you've already kind of deviated from what you do. Like, like I had a really good conversation with a, a gentleman that works at a prop firm in new york and, and we were talking about how you know he trades like big size and but his and his secret is like he doesn't short green candles like ever like he like he hit for him he ha if he's top ticking he broke process he needs to the top to be set like kind of what we were saying earlier like he needs to basically have a signal on his entry that is not yeah. guessing the top and it's like yeah. having that mentality and like just kind of pushing away your ego can help push away that meddling idea of like, oh, like I'm, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna start shorting this tick. Cause like Harry said that I saw a seller or because VWAP should reject or because this had the other thing. And it's hard. It is hard to like, not want to like, quote unquote, like impose your will on like the stock. Like, like to every time you're shorting, like you want to be like killing it, like kicking ass. Right. And, and the reality is like, what, nobody cares. Like the stock doesn't care. Like you shouldn't yeah. care. Yeah. All, you, all you should care about like your 500 shares. Like you're not going to do 
dick to this stock. But you know what will is like when you get a good entry and a good exit, you're the right. one making money. Like the market has a fun a funky way. I used to trade with Joe uh, Kelly on the phone, who's a head mod at MIC, and we used to talk all the time and just like. The market has a funny way of like punishing people. And it's like, the longer you do this, the more you realize like the guys who short early are the guys that Harry's selling into when they're covering the fucking, they're covering the damn top of the move and Harry's selling yeah. or the, or the buyers yeah. that are buying the top are the ones that Alex is filling a fucking yeah, huge right. Massive <laughs> fucking share right. <laughs> Yeah, Like it, it is just, yeah. like, that's how you have to look at this. It's always the guys that are too early that are getting fucked. So if you ever feel like you're too early, you probably are. Probably like, are, I, yeah. That's it. And it's hard to it's hard to do and it's hard to take that kind of like opposite stance. But but that's really the key to trading is like don't yeah. trade with everyone else. Like until the tides have completely shifted, like and it's like an obvious long or an obvious short, and like there's just you know you're on the right side. You can't trade with the masses. You can't do what everyone else is doing, or yeah. else like you're probably wrong. Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. so it's not easy. It's not, but, but it's possible, you know, it, it is. And it's possible just again, fantasy stuff that Bao has preached for years. People always ask me like, like that, the friend of mine that joined MIC is like, how the fuck does Bao's charts look like that? I'm like, dude, Bao is like, God love the man. He's not fucking Albert Einstein. He's not like, he's not a trading Messiah. He's just disciplined to his process. Yeah. Yeah. And like, that's yeah. why his charts have looked the same since like 2003 probably <laughs> before yeah, you yeah. can put arrows on shards because he's just disciplined to the process that yeah. makes him money you know and, yeah. and he knows like he does get in early so he sizes to that yeah. and that's just again take that kind of mindset take that like contrarian idea of like being against the masses and i think you'll find a lot of help in your own trading yeah 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 definitely yeah, yeah i think that's yeah. great i think yeah. that's probably a great note to end it and uh you know yeah that was good um, yeah, dude, that's that awesome. Good. So thanks for yeah. uh, coming on, bro. Yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah, awesome. Appreciate it, man. And, uh, Thank you guys. It. Thank you for, for everything you guys do. I mean, uh, I really do uh, appreciate MIC. Uh, this was my first community that I joined. And, you yeah. know, from the beginning, I just knew that, like, this is where I wanted to be. This is the kind of community that I wanted to to learn from. So, so yeah, we'll just continue that. learning. And, uh, yeah, be active, man. Don't, don't ever hesitate to post, like, ask questions and stuff, because honestly, Best advice is like I swear is closed mouths don't get fed. People who don't ask, people who don't like kind of step up and like yeah. take advantage of like what we all have to offer, they're the guys yeah. that won't won't make it anywhere. So if you're ever feeling lost or anything, don't don't hesitate to reach out to uh, to either of us. Yeah, cool man. Sure. I will.